I'm Vicky, and I'm um, and I stand here before you on behalf of the National University of Samoa as media program and as well as uh, representing the Pacific region. And I'm not going to dwell again on the impacts of climate change because for obvious reasons, we've heard from the past two speakers about the impacts of climate change. <coughs> I'll basically just talk about the case study of what we do at the National University of Samoa and how uh, the role of media education in Samoa <coughs> I just want to show you just a preview because uh, the, the key, key question for, um, for, for us as Pacific Islanders, uh, and, and there's this one word that um, <coughs> every year we, we get to, to, um, to have this annual training with the regional body, environment body in, in, in Samoa, and this is the, it's called the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, and this is the, the, um, the regional body that, that takes environmental issues from the region to uh, the international level, and um, <coughs> yeah, and uh, what we do every year, we, we we have this annual training with SPREP, where we get the experts in environment to talk to media students, um, and to share their insights and experiences on how we do best in reporting um, climate change in Samoa. Now, just to show you, um, this is this was a research that was done by uh, my colleague Langipo Ivashirao Jackson, and she's the only qualified. Um, environmental reporter in Samoa and um, <clears throat> she's been to a lot of COP meetings and we were fortunate enough to get her um, last semester to, to do specifically on climate change. So at the National University of Samoa's media school we have made progress um, in terms of getting the students engaged with local experts on, on environment and especially with reference to climate change. And this is what she came up uh, with the, because this is, this is the term that was given to us when we had that media panel. Climate change, it's not sexy enough. It's not sexy enough for editors. And this, uh, it reflects in this study because these were the priorities of various newspapers and television stations in Samoa. Um, Newsline is a privately owned newspaper. Savali is a government newspaper. And Samoa Observer is the sole monopoly of print media in Samoa. It's the only daily. And it, you can see in these figures, uh, climate change, it's, it's got the lowest. It, it's not always the priority in Samoa. And the highest here is business. Sorry, politics. And in red, it's Savali. And it's understandable, it's a government newspaper. And Moving on, and interesting enough, um, sorry, can, can I just I show, show you again? Um, and Savali as well also got the highest uh, rate in terms of the amount of coverage given to climate change. And for some reasons, because the government, all these, these meetings, international meetings on climate change, there's always a government journalist on these trips to report back what's you know, what's, what's happening and how that, how Samoa relates to climate change. So I'm going to leave that for now, but I'm just going to go, go back again to the role of journalism education and the role of media, because this actually reflects the priorities of different newsrooms in, in Samoa and, and, you know, how important climate change is to them. Um, and of course, like uh, my colleague, um, <coughs> was saying before, it's, it doesn't sell the, the newspapers, it doesn't sell the news. Um, and what we do at the National University of Samoa is this, the climate change is on top of a lot of issues that we face as journalism schools in the region. And this is not just the National University of Samoa, but you know, I have my colleagues here from, um, from the region. And what we do is we try as much to, to, um, to take the students out to the communities. And this is, what, this is something we do every year. We take the students out on a field trip to the remote communities, talk to the traditional leaders. I deliberately wore green today because green represents, it's symbolic, it represents, it gives us life. You know, I felt um, as an educator, Let's bring life to journalism education. You know, let's bring this, this topic up you know, as, as, as one of priorities in, in terms of how we can include this in our curriculum. Um, and at the National University of Samoa, we have 
we have a module. We have a, a climate change module. And there's, there's already plans, uh, plans to expand this to other disciplines as well, because at the moment, the structure of the National University of Samoa, we do not have a particular program or a course given to climate change other than the one we have at the, uh, the Media and Communication Program. So what needs to be done? I mean, there's so many issues, a lot of numerous issues. And to, you know, I'll, I'll just be, um, I'll just give you some recommendations and suggestions and views on, on how we can do best as educators in the region. I think first and foremost, we need to highlight science reporting to strengthen environmental coverage. Um, and that's still lacking in the region. And um, uh, we have uh, committed to, as a group, as media educators specific, we have committed to ensure that this is included across the board. And, you know, we need to, we ourselves as educators, we need to specialize in this area as well um, so that our students can do the same. And, and of course, as I said, climate change as a module needs to be established. And, and the other important thing is, is language. We have our own indigenous languages, you know, in these different communities, and we need to commun It's one of the challenges, communicating climate change as a topic of discussion to these small communities in our own dialects, in our own languages. How can we do best at that? And, and of course, climate change is news in the Pacific. Uh, you see everyone at these international meetings, the Pacific is always there to lobby for, you know, you know, we, attention, we need your attention, the world, we need your attention, we are feeling the impacts of climate change. And one thing I find that's, is, that we need to do more about is investigative pieces. Uh, we need more investigative reporters out there to, to bring about the issues, the facts about climate change. And what is it about climate change that, you know, we deem that it's very newsworthy, it's, it's, it's worth talking about. Um, so, we at the National University of Samoa, you know, the, the nature of how we design we, our courses is very much on, you know, providing more opportunities for students um, to get them out, you know, expose them to the real world, get them to see where are these, you know, where are we feeling the, the impacts of climate change, where, you know, take us to the beach and let us see, you know, okay, uh, you know, talk to the experts, traditional leaders. And this year alone, we, for the first time, we've had our, our prize giving for you know, um, the, our students to reward them, to get them recognized, their work. They've been out there researching pieces. And we've had their stories published. And we had the first journal, uh, jur student journal published last year. And, um, and we received a lot of support from the media industry to keep doing this. We need to, to have this, the young people's voices recorded at some point. And, and our first meeting as media educator specific group last year, we talked about a regional initiative where all students, young people can come together and have their, their voices heard, get those stories, community stories documented. And I think I'll stop here, David. Um, the floor is open for questions later on, but I think that's, that's um, basically from, from us. Thank you.